Well, new developments today in the case of missing Missouri baby Lisa Irwin. A woman saying that investigators have now questioned her at least four times about a phone call made to her cell phone from one of the family phones of missing baby Lisa. The call was allegedly made just a few hours before the baby was reported missing, around 8, 8.30 that night. Remember, Lisa's family told investigators that their phones, and me for that matter, that their phones were stolen along with the baby and were not working, could not make outgoing phone, phone calls. Police say that all these leads are being pursued. Bill Daly is a former FBI investigator and joins me now. So, Bill, what we have here is a situation where the parents say they took our baby and they took our cell phones. We didn't see the baby after 6.40 on the night in question. She was discovered missing at 4 a.m. The police go to this woman, Megan Wright. Mm -hmm. They say a phone call was made from either Jeremy or Deborah Bradley's phone to you at 8 or 8.30 on the night in question, 8 or 8.30 p.m. This Megan Wright says, I don't know them. How, why, I don't know why they'd be calling me. But I have a community phone. I live in a house with seven other random people, and it could have been made to any one of them. What, what is going on here? Yeah, you know, Meg, you talk about a, a bizarre twist, already very bizarre story. I mean, in this case, you know, a lot of this stuff is discernible through electronics. So put aside what people say, you know, how they act. The fact of the matter is, is that either the phones are working or they're not working. You know, sometimes phones can allow you to call out for a 911 call if there's an emergency, but they're going to let you squeeze out a 50-second call to some some number who happens to be in the community or They're anywhere. not going to allow that. That's not. I mean, you have either, restricted phone either it's service, off, you can't either it's on or it's off. I okay. mean, that's very easily uh, discernible. Uh, the other thing, this woman receiving or someone in her home, one of the eight people, including her, uh, receiving the call, you know, it can also be the police can, can identify where that phone was. Maybe not in the house, but they can say, was it in the house? Was it down the street? Because of the cell towers. The same thing with the call that actually uh, it was made from one of the missing phones. They can say, was it made from the vicinity of the home, from the Bradley home, or was it made some other place? Okay, so they and that's one of the see. techniques they use in, with missing people. Even though your phone is off, mm -hmm. it's sending a signal to the towers. So those towers can do some interpretation and let you know generally where people are. So there's a lot of electronics here that start to suggest that, in fact, a phone call was made. The FBI uh, apparently had called this woman, Mrs. Wright, under the pretext of buying some electronics she had for sale because she had that posted and had that number posted, and they connected with her. That's why they were drawn to her after they apparently saw this call. That so was they made. saw the number on Correct. some bill, perhaps? Somehow they well, saw just the number. Yeah, uh, just probably a very interactive process. They'd be able to look at phone records as they are. Exactly, because that's the first thing you're going to do is subpoena the cell phone records of Jeremy and, Bra and Deborah. They see the number. They call this Megan Wright and start talking. Now they've interrogated her four times or questioned her. By the way, here she is. Here's a soundbite from the one we're talking about, Megan Wright. I received a phone call, well, my phone did, um, the night that baby Lisa went missing. It was apparently a 50-second phone call. Uh, I don't know who answered it or what was said or who was on the other end of the phone. She doesn't know because it's the community phone. And then, but, but, but my question to you is, Bill, listen to the parents when I ask them about their phone service. You tell me, are they lying here? Didn't know I hadn't, time. I hadn't paid the, I hadn't paid the cell phone bill when it was due, so our uh, our phones were restricted. So you couldn't have called her on the cell phone if you wanted to. Right. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. They told me they couldn't make outgoing calls. Would they be so bold as to just make that up when, in fact, they they know they're you know they're they're not stupid. They know that their phone records are trackable. Trackable, and you would also know as a, I would assume, as a cell phone owner, whether or not your phone is operable, whether you can make calls. Now, could they have, you know, assumed that it was turned off because the phone company told it was going to be turned off? Did they actually try it? I don't know that. So, from an investigative standpoint, I can't rule out the fact that maybe they were under the assumption it was turned off, but never actually tried. Well, does this support an intruder theory? Because if they, if you, if you accept them at their word that their phones, you know, couldn't make outgoing phone calls, uh, you know. Does it mean that the investigators are making this up when they go to Megan Wright and say, we've got somebody from these two phones calling you, that they're making that up because maybe they think she's involved or keep in mind, this, this is a critical piece, that Megan Wright dated the homeless guy Jersey who was seen around the house and who wound up getting arrested, they say, on unrelated charges. Yeah, you know, Megan, I mean, is it possible? I don't think, you know, with all the leads they're tracking down, unless there was really some reason to drill in on, on this woman in that home, that they would go through some kind of ruse. I think that this was a way to kind of, uh, because I told you, the FBI did call that number because it was posted. Mm -hmm. And so I'm assuming that the FBI, knowing that the call had been made from one of the missing phones, 
decided, well, let's just see what happens let's, when we call. Let's see who picks up. Let's see how this is handled. Don't you find it Maybe very coincidental, though? Someone. Okay, so that that's, that's what happened, that they, they called that number, and it leads them to this pink-haired woman who happens to be the, the ex-girlfriend recently broken up with this guy, Jersey, this homeless guy who was seen around the neighborhood, who the police looked at for a while, who wound up getting arrested on unrelated charges. But where our information is, that guy's still in jail right now. The police are saying, hey, you know, he, they're not saying he's been clear, but they're saying we moved on. We looked into him, That's we correct. moved on. Yeah. But would they tell us if they really were still looking at him? Well, I, I would expect that a good investigation is not going to tell everything that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there may be some disinformation at some point to kind of throw people, including the media, off the trail a bit. So I, I have to take everything a bit suspect. However, the fact is that, you know, by calling that number, and there could be now seven other people in the home. Yeah. Now, this one, Ms. Wright, Ms. Wright, claims that she got the phone back later that night, that yeah. she didn't have at that time. So there are so many kind of dangling participles out it's here on this strange. case. It's very strange. And unfortunately is that the, the parents haven't helped the case because in many of these statements, either they've been not, you know, clear, mm -hmm. correct, Perhaps sometimes it's a mystery because she said she last saw the baby at 640 and according to her at 8 or 830 p.m. She would have been on her front porch drinking with the neighbor. So and she says she does not believe anybody could have gotten in the house during that period between 630 and 1030 because yeah. she was and right also, in front. And also, make it, let's tell you, somebody's going to go, go t steal a baby. And by the way, let me grab these couple of cell phones on the way out. That's Why? Because they can't so they won't be able to call police. That's not going to stop people from calling police. That's been a, a, a piece of this that none of us have understood from the beginning. Bill, thank you. I don't think we understand it any better. But, no, but uh, I think there's some technical aspects here that police are working on that will help better understand, or at least they, they will understand it. We may not right away. They know more than we do. Bill, thank you.